Well, good day, everybody, and welcome back. Well, I have here a typewriter you've probably seen before. This is an Olympia Reporter. This is an electric type bar machine, and it's actually made in Japan by Nakajima. So I took it out of storage the other day just to have some fun with it, and I started noticing a problem that I think I'd seen in the past but I ignored. I had some piling on of letters, intermittently it seemed like, and also I decided, you know, the sound of it is a little bit kind of loud and hollow sounding, and maybe I can add some sound insulation to it, and so I got down to uh, tinkering with this typewriter. Let's talk about tinkering with the Olympia Reporter. Stay tuned. Well, I've identified several possible causes for the piling on of letters, keeping in mind that they seem to happen more so on the right-hand half of the paper than on the left-hand half. So, one of the possibilities, now this is in no particular order of preference, but the ideas are, first of all, a hard platen causing the type bars to rebound or bounce off the platen faster than otherwise, which would affect the timing of when the trip point happens. Keeping in mind, this is a half-space machine, meaning that when the Type R is heading toward the platen, it, it has a trip point about a quarter inch from the platen, right there, and then once it rebounds off the platen, it has the second half of the movement is right there. It looks to me like the second trip is happening quite a bit further back from the platen than the initial trip, and maybe it's too far back, causing the platen or the carriage to still be in motion when the next key comes up to type. So maybe that secondary trip point needs to be adjusted. That's one possibility. The third possibility is maybe the spring motor tension is too low, so the, the carriage would be simply moving too slow. Also, this particular machine has an auto carriage return system and so when you move the carriage it's actually moving a drawstring and it's turning a pulley over here on the right side that's for the auto carriage return mechanism maybe those parts are binding or dragging the carriage to be operating slower than it should be another possibility is the drive belt which is over here the drive belt tension could be too high causing the tight bars to actually operate too fast and they are operating faster than the carriage can move and then finally this machine does have a tabulator brake system and it's a very good brake system there as you can see and so just this is one other brainstorm idea that maybe the tabulator brake is dragging all the time, slowing down the movement of the carriage a little bit. So those are all the possible models for why this intermittent piling on of letters could be happening. And I need to go figure out which one or ones are the more likely causes. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take this machine apart. I've actually had it apart before I started this video. So I'm going to have to... Uh, take off this screw. There's a screw here, one here, and then on the underside of the typewriter there's a screw recessed here, one here, and then the four feet. All of those have to come off. Okay, so I need to split apart the two halves of the body shell, and I have this little piece of plastic. I got it from a, a kit of screwdriver bits, and it's actually designed for prying apart electronics like remote controls and things like that. Basically, any hard piece of plastic that you can wedge in here that will uh, separate the little plastic clips. There's one right there. There it is. And then the back also like that. And what I want to do here is to basically pick up the whole thing and set the upper shell with the chassis off away from the lower part. There is a strain relief right here that needs to come loose for the cable, the power cord. Like that. Okay, I wanted to point out to you guys that I have done some sound insulation additions to this machine already. So this black hard foam, you get at craft stores. This is about roughly a quarter inch thick, maybe four millimeters, five millimeters. 
and uh, it sits down in here pretty tightly. I'm using some uh, Scotch, uh, 3M Scotch double-sided tape. I'm also using this inch-thick urethane foam that you can buy in sheets at the craft store, cutting them up in pieces, and these are fit strategically along the sides so that they will provide some sound insulation without interfering with the drive belt. Like for instance, the little pulley for the drive belt, I have a hole for that, and then the main uh, drive spindle is right here, so I don't want to interfere with that. And there's also an area right over here where the other side of the spindle, where the auto carriage return uh, clutch pulley is, that I have to leave open. But basically, I try to put as much foam in here as I can without interfering with the machine. Okay, now, in order to get the top shell off of the chassis, power switch has to be on so that you unlock the carriage. I'm going to move the margins all the way out. And I never can remember which way this goes. But basically move the carriage all the way to the right if you can. And move this out to the right and off like that. And oh, I should mention also I've added some urethane foam to the uh, insides of the upper body shell as well. With the idea being add as much foam as you can without actually interfering with the mechanics of the operation of the, of the typewriter. And that hopefully should make the typewriter a little quieter. I should also point out to you that the ribbon cover, I also put the dense foam on the inside of it. It actually looks quite a bit smaller than the shell, than the overall size with it in the shell, which is kind of cool. Not that big of a chassis. Really, the whole thing is it's a bigger carriage. Okay, the original belt is a toothed V-belt that's about 5 millimeters wide, roughly 3 sixteenths of an inch. And the problem with it, it was stretched too much, so it was slipping real badly. It is a toothed V-belt, but it's very soft and flexible, so it can go around the short turning radius of the motor pulley. I got a, uh, an O-ring, a round cross-section O-ring, that is an eighth of an inch in diameter, and it's roughly four and an eighth inches in diameter. With belts, they measure them circumference-wise. With O-rings, they measure them diameter-wise. That is, if you orient the O-ring so it's a near-perfect circle, you're going to be measuring the diameter of that. So four and an eighth. Uh, this worked, but it was a little tight, and I thought that maybe the uh, tight bars were operating a little too swiftly and fastly, and so I found a slightly longer O-ring, and that's what I'm using here. It is also an eighth of an inch uh, thickness, but it's four and a quarter. So a little bit looser O-ring that I'm using in place of the notched V-belt. And it seems to work fine. It's a little bit less violent in operation. That is, the Type R's move a little bit slower, a little bit not quite as extra fast, that is. But I'm still not completely convinced that the dry belt need, maybe needs to be a little bit looser. Also, there's three screws that mount the motor to the side chassis, and I've went ahead and loosened those and pushed the motor as far as it'll go toward the drive spindle in an effort to slacken up the tension a little bit more. So I might have to go with one size larger belt or o-ring if I can't fix the piling on of letters problem. This little thing here, this is the tabulator brake. The actual internals of it are right here and uh, I've taken it off. It's just mounted by one screw to this little post right here and the gear on the back side of this little thing engages the main sprocket of the escapement and it does have these little centrifugal operated pads that spin out and slow it down and they're engaged all the time so I went ahead and did some test typing without that break in place at all and I'm still seeing a little bit of piling on the letters when I rapidly type so I don't think it's these a tabulated brake that's slowing down the carriage I'm going to go ahead and uh, degrease that shaft and re-lubricate it and put this back in though Okay, so here is the little tabulator brake itself, and there's the plastic gear that it engages with that main gear. These are the little centrifugal shoes that fly out like that when it spins and rubs against the housing, on the inside of the housing. So I'm just going to degrease this with a little alcohol and then re-lubricate the shaft and the shaft where it mounts.
All right, so that fits together like that. This mounting screw fits onto it like that, and that mounts on that little post in the escapement. Okay, so I've reinstalled the tabulator brake. It did not really affect the speed of the carriage or anything, but it needed to be cleaned and uh, degreased. So um, the trip point for the escapement is set with this set screw and nut. That's the point where the trip begins to happen, like that. What sets the ending trip point, there is a pair of arms right here, these right here, and there is this little black spring that connects between them. And this spring was connected between the middle two pairs of holes, and I went ahead and moved the spring out to the outer end. This gives the spring a little bit more tension. It increases the tension between the two arms. It's a half space machine. That's when the Type R gets up close to the platen, and then when it comes back off, that's the secondary trip point. The one arm is pulling the other arm via a spring, and what I've done is increase the spring tension so that it'll be a little bit snappier on that second trip when it does the second half of the spacing. Well, so I went ahead and decided to degrease the typewriter, and I used lacquer thinner very vigorously, and what I forgot was Yes, I got lacquer thinner on the plastic card guides. This one was streaked, discolored it pretty badly, but actually the other one is much worse. Pretty much totally cloudy. And this is a real lesson to you guys. Don't use lacquer thinner unless you know for sure that it's not going to get on the plastic parts of your typewriter. It does do a good job of degreasing, however. But uh, in my desperation to figure out a solution to this problem that I in introduced in this machine is I made a template or a pattern of the card guides here. I fashioned a new set of card guides. These are curved nicely. They're actually curved a little bit better than the original ones were. They are closer to the, um, the top edge of the card guide is closer to the paper. So the paper feeds through the machine a little bit better. And so what this is, is I cut it out of a drinks container, a plastic grape juice, Welch's grape juice if you have to know, a drinks container. And so what I did is I put some masking tape on the container. I traced out the pattern from the cardboard template onto the tape, and then I used a razor knife to cut it out. And then I uh, drew a straight edge line with a permanent marker on the back side of this for the typing line, and uh, punched a couple holes for the mounting screws down here on these brackets here. And uh, yeah, it actually works surprisingly well. And I actually have a little bit more curve here than I had on the original one, so that it does hold the paper a little bit closer to the platen. So, well, I rescued the machine from my own stupidity, hopefully, and if I ever need to replace these again, I can do it easily. And also, I could actually make these a little bit bigger or differently shaped if I want to, because, hey, I can cut it out to whatever shape I want. And I have to show you also this little blemish right here on the front of the carriage side panel. Yes, that's also a drop of lacquer thinner that got on there. I had the machine raised up on its back and I was squirting lacquer thinner into the guts of it and blowing it out with an air compressor. And it got a little too wild with the lacquer thinner. Lesson learned. Yeah, so here are the card guides. I might be able to flip one here. They shouldn't crack or break is easy and if they do I can fashion another one pretty easily. Well as I was troubleshooting this problem with the piling on of letters I come up with like five or six different theories. I think we should go over them here. So first of all um, hard platen causing the type bars to bounce off faster than otherwise. Well I was doing some test typing earlier with really thin paper and now I'm using like 30 pound paper which is essentially like typing with a backing sheet, and I didn't really notice any difference at all, so I don't really think that's a major factor. Okay, it's a half-space escapement, so the second trip point is happening too late. Well, as it turns out, you can't really adjust the timing of the second trip. You can only adjust the timing when it first trips. I did increase the spring tension between those two little arms. That kind of affects 
somewhat how that trip happens when it's rapidly typing. And I'm hoping that that helps a little bit. Uh, the other issue could have been spring motor tension is too low. Well, initially it actually was a little too low, I think. So to add another revolution of tension to the spring motor, you basically have to very carefully hold the motor, advance it. See how I'm getting slack in the in the draw band? You advance it enough and don't let it slip. Advance it enough so you can grab it and wrap it around the drum another time. See that slack right there? You just pull it, got to get your spring hook through the holes in the chassis. You grab it and you basically wrap it around another loop. That's how you can increase the tension without actually having to take the motor off or loosen the screw on it or anything like that. That actually helped because my initial test typing, I was getting the problem on the entire right half of the page, on the right half of the line, and then after I did that, I'm only getting it about on the right hand third of the line when it's piling on the letters. Okay. Too much drag on the carriage from the auto carriage return mechanism. I don't think that's the case. And uh, I tested it repeatedly and it's really not dragging at all. It's only turning a little pulley uh, and a gear and those aren't really affecting the tension on the carriage. So that's not really the problem. And then the tabulator brake system dragging on the carriage. Well, it does actually uh, engage all the time on the escapement gear, but I took it off and it really didn't make any difference. And I went ahead and cleaned and lubed that little uh, tabulator brake. So I should add, I did some uh, cleaning and degreasing and re-lubrication of the escapement, especially those two little arms that have the spring connected between them. Um, I did clean and re-lube those. So between that and changing the tension of the spring on there, it is working a lot better and it's hardly doing it at all. I'm only noticing it every once in a while near the right side. So for now, I'm going to call this a success because, um, well, it's a mechanical device and there's never anything perfect when it comes to me mechanical devices, of course, but it's better than it was. And of course, we have the card guides that I messed up in my degreasing and we sort of made a makeshift replacement for those. Well, I think there's a couple lessons that we can discuss from this little episode. Well, first of all, I think it's really a good idea to try to do incremental improvements to the mechanical quality of your typewriters in your collection. And you don't necessarily have to fix every problem on every typewriter all at once, but just tackle them one at a time. And over time, hopefully, you'll improve the entire condition of your fleet of typewriters. Okay, number two is while you're in the process of doing that, don't forget that there are chemical solvents like lacquer thinner that can do damage to your typewriter if you're not careful. And also make sure you use them in a well-ventilated space, not only for your inhalation safety, but if they're a fire hazard. In order to make a machine like this more usable for me, more pleasurable for me, I want to get rid of those last little nagging problems. And this piling on problem turned out to be quite interesting because there's multiple causes or can be multiple causes for this to happen. Well, so don't be afraid to tinker with your typewriters, but just be careful. And as always, the whole purpose of this is to enable our creative expression through words via ink on paper. And I wish you the very best in your creative journey. And as always, stay creative and have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye for now.